The Giants franchise is back again today. Welcome everybody to the channel. We are currently 13 games into this season, 10 and 3, leading the NFC East. And we're going to wrap up the regular season today and take a look at the playoff picture, which right now we're in line to be the number one seed in the NFC. The Chiefs would be the number one in the AFC. Two years ago, we met them for a chance at the Super Bowl and the Chiefs were victorious. So we're just trying to get back there for the first time in a couple years. For a quick stat update right now, Brian Petrovsky is at 28 touchdown passes to 15 interceptions. Tavares Towns over 1,000 yards on the season, 9 touchdowns. And compared to last year, he is on pace for a bit less yards, a lot less touchdowns. But that was a pretty special season. Rayshon Graham, on the other hand, has been fantastic. And he is already setting career highs in touchdowns and yards. And in five more catches, it'll be his personal triple crown, I guess you could say. Now, there was some interesting feedback last episode to check out Jason Weaver in the slot. I don't know if he's got the route running to really be as effective there. He's done well on the outside, doing more of the underneath stuff. So I can see kind of the thought behind making him a slot receiver while that role hasn't been productive for us this year. But I just feel like with that lower route running, might still be best to leave things the way they are. It's just been weird though, just because we tend to see a lot of slot production here in Madden, and this is about the least I've ever seen us have. Our slot receivers this year, Myers has 29 catches, Calvin Ridley has two. We're not even seeing our slot get three catches a game which is pretty shocking. We win our fifth game in a row over Cincinnati, 35 to 14. Looks like it was a pretty dominant win for us. Petrovsky now with 32 touchdowns on the season, registering four more. Tavares Towns, solid day, no touchdowns. ETN got 15 carries as well. And Dion Myers did have a 67 yarder, a touchdown. All of his action, though, has happened in simulated games. I'm so confused. The CPU decided to make a practice squad move for me, releasing a kicker, Frank Maddox, and signing a defensive tackle. Oh, I guess we had a pregame injury to Dexter Lawrence, and the game decided we had to fill that roster spot. So Frank Maddox just got picked up by the Eagles then. He'll be their starting kicker. Oh, I cannot stand that feature. We have to make a signing then at defensive tackle, and we're going to bring in Kevin Dockery, who is 6 foot 5, 393 pounds. 393 pound defensive tackle. Bring him in. Now the press is talking about the last game from Brian Petrovsky, another great one. He's been doing a good job once again. So his goal now is to throw one or fewer interceptions, and he will probably get one, and have 400 scrimmage yards or four total touchdowns for significant XP. Well, we won the game 41 to 14, and Petrovsky only had one touchdown. He only passed the ball 22 times. Tavares Towns ran really well. Travis Etienne, over 200 yards rushing here as a team. So I don't think that's going to get a boost for him. Great day for the running backs, though. You gotta love that. Interceptions for McKinney and Quinton, too. So we don't get anything from that Brian Petrovsky scenario, but now we have the trench boost one for the offensive line. So now we have a rushing challenge, and this is going to be an XP reward for the old lineman. And we do win again, 27 to 10 this time, and we ran for 137. That's a solid day on the ground. We'll see what kind of a boost that gives us, but hey, you can't complain about 102 for Towns, a little bit more for ETN. Calvin Ridley, four catches in this game. Jason Weaver caught another touchdown. 
Two more sacks for Golson. He's been heating up again late in the season. That's his time. Let's check out the trench boost results. Another solid week on the ground. Offensive line's playing really well. And everybody gets 2,500. That's really nice for the young players, especially. Hal Reed is now getting an upgrade, and we'll go with the power. He still had his struggles against the premier edge rushers, but I think he's at least a solid tackle there on the right side. We have Patrick Perkins, who has been getting some more snaps. And it looks like if we go to the general tab, yeah, that's much better. 18's a little low, but at least he's getting something here in all these games. He does have one sack against Jacksonville. That was the only one. But depending on his development, we'll see, you know, what our decisions are this offseason when it comes to Dexter Lawrence, if we feel ready to start moving on and moving around things on the defensive line. How about Warren Griffith? He made the play of the day last episode. That was awesome. Blocking upgrade for him. And here are the ratings. 67 run blocking. 76 awareness. We'll upgrade Antonio Golson, who has been great for us in this series. Nice upgrade there with the strength included. And he's got 10 sacks on the season. And again, late in the year, two sacks here, three game streak. He's just always produced in the second half of the year. But then you have Aziz Ojulari, who had the breakout year before his contract came up. And now this year, he's deciding to have a big year again. I guess he had 11.5 last year with an interception, dropping in coverage on occasion. So with this kind of production, Probably not looking to save money here and just leave things the way they are on the front four. So we are 13 and 3 right now. We also get Otis Springs back this week. He missed like four or five games. The East has been over and done with now for a while. All those teams have trended towards 500, while the Giants have won seven straight. So in the NFC. Might have something to play for here. The Cardinals are 12 and 4. Only one spot gets that first round by, so we might not be able to sit the starters. Unless we played Arizona, and we did, so we own a tiebreaker over them, which means we are the NFC's number one seed yet again. That was way back in week two, so we don't have to play starters today as we take on Cleveland in the season finale. If we check out the yearly awards to see what we're close to, there's nothing for MVP or Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year also. Like, we're so good at so many things, but apparently no standouts for these awards. Petrovsky doesn't even crack the top eight for best quarterbacks in the conference. What's going on here? So... I don't think we lose anything by benching a lot of the players or playing a lot of the backups. But we're going to take on Cleveland then today and get a look at a lot of other players that we're not always used to, but might have a big role as soon as next season. Miles Garrett, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa, some real playmakers on the defensive side of the ball. Still got Nick Chubb. Jedrick Wills, they bring in Anthony Cordova, a superstar defensive tackle. So this front seven is pretty good. Cordova mainly a run stopper. And the quarterback, John Nails. He's got a strong arm, throws a nice medium ball, deep accuracy is solid. And they still have Baker Mayfield, by the way. He's just not playing and got replaced after a 38-6 and six season. I'm hoping in this episode, though, we can get more of a full look at Dion Myers playing outside and inside. Speed boost? You're never mad at that. So next time out, we're going to have the playoffs, but we'll set the stage after we get the season finale wrapped up. I weirdly enjoy these games that can be meaningless at times just because I like seeing more players get a chance to play. 
Tyler Hunter is out there playing some quarterback today. And we'll hand this off. Bobby Webster finds the hole and he picks up a gain of nine. Webster is a player who could grow into more of a role. Dion Myers as well. Webster right side. Nice run. Two good ones to start the day. Gain of 10. Just had a holding call on today's left tackle, Justin Elam. I have a couple backups in there on the line, but can't field an entire second team line. You don't want to see what that looks like anyway, though. And it's third down and 18. Tyler Hunter, can he make a play? There's Garrett scrambling away. Come on, Tyler, you got to know better. You can't outrun Miles Garrett. And we'll play some defense now. And it is John Tough as Nails at quarterback. First and 10. He'll fire short and a catch and run opportunity. First down. Hunter Henry. Switching around things in the secondary as well. There's a catch. We'll see Braxton Babber get some chances. Darrell Gordon, of course. I still have Nick Gresham at safety. I just want to see him play there a bit more. And Nick Chubb breaks the tackle of Otis Springs and gains nine. Jabril Peppers is in the slot there. Top of your screen on second down. John Nails under pressure. And he lost the football. But a lineman gets back on it. And the Browns will maintain possession. Nice to see some pressure here forced by the backups. 40 sacks on the season now for New York. Oh, that was Patrick Perkins they gave that to. Now Nails is going to fire deep to the end zone, and that was well covered incomplete. Oh, they're trying this. All right, just your average 62-yard field goal in the first week of January. Nope. Let's jump back into the Giants offense. They're at the 32 of Cleveland. Here's Tyler Hunter. What kind of throw is that, man? He's a backup, okay? He hasn't played that much. But that was a terrible throw. Second and 10. Hunter pressured again. Gets away and decides to keep it all the way and still gets sacked. I want to see these receivers make some plays here. Third and 10 for Hunter. He bails again, fires on the move, and missed an open receiver. Incomplete. A Xavius Spellman picks up a sack here in the first quarter. Scoreboard went away. But the defense is actually competing. All right, some big plays on this drive for Cleveland. Those two big plays are both to Bo Rowland. And Cleveland is now in business, down 3 0 in the second quarter. John Nails over the middle, and that's right in front of Springs. Third and one for John Nails. He fires across the middle, and that will move the sticks again. He is 7 for 10 in the air. That's Chris Gonzalez. And now probably going to see Nick Chubb. Not yet. As we pressure Nails and he's going down. Ernest Black at the 12-yard line. This has been a tough defense so far. They're eight yards out now. Nails under pressure. And he's going down again. David Camp this time. He's somebody I wanted to see more of. That's solid. So I like what I'm seeing here from the defense, but Tyler Hunter, you got to make some plays in the air, man. On first down, wide open and running room. It's Deion Myers. He is inside the Cleveland 40-yard line. A little play action now, faking the ETN. And there goes Hunter. He does have pretty good speed. He likes to take off, as you can tell. Gain of seven. Inside again, first down, that is Bobby Webster, 32 yards on nine rushes. Handoff to Webster once again. 
Ooh, Ridley is shaken up on that play. We don't want to see injuries here in the last week. Second down for Hunter. He completes it outside. And that is Pat Stallworth inside the 10. Running with Webster. He throws a stiff arm. And Webster is in for the touchdown. Nice run by the young running back. The rookie fourth round pick. And he puts the Giants in front. I like what I've seen this year from Bobby Webster. Now Cleveland trails by seven. Two minute drill for them. Trying to go short. Nice hit by Peppers. Third and six. We'd love one more drive here. Nails incomplete. Right through his hands. Another chance here for Tyler Hunter. He escapes the pocket. Runs across the 30 and picks up first down yardage. Four-man rush. Now Hunter again evading Garrett. He completes to Stallworth with the crossbody throw. Third down and one for New York. Hunter stepping up and going down. Intercepted by Braxton Babber here to start the third quarter. How about this defense? We have the backups out there, and they're still dominant as ever. Might maintain our number one standings in a lot of categories. Here's Bobby Webster, a little cutback, but doesn't have the speed to be really dangerous on runs like that. Hunter from the pocket. Completes out to Stallworth. He's got room. And he's taken down inside the five. Webster brought down on the play. Looking for touchdown number two. But now third and goal. Might be time to let Hunter try and make a play. Empty backfield. Hunter's blitzed. Runs away. Slings it incomplete for Griffith. Nice attempt by Hunter. Let's see if the defense can keep it up. They've played excellent football today. And Cleveland has 18 rushing yards. I literally can't believe that. Well, they have more than 18 now. Because Chubb just got 15 more. Running off tackle. Oh, bad angle by Springs. And then he catches Chubb from behind. Unfortunately, they found out that Nick Chubb is really good and they should hand the ball off against the backup defense. Took them two and a half quarters to find that trick out, though. And they're going to stay with the run this time. Hearns is there with Ernest Black. But now they're going back to the air on second down. Pressure got there, and that was Frank Sermon. Not bad. I've been impressed by the front four all day long. This is... A really good defensive effort. Third and nine. Wide open. And a first down at the 30. Chubb. Another good run on first down. He is out to the 23. Cleveland getting closer now. Nails. Throws complete inside the five. Three yards out for Cleveland. They toss this out. Chubb kept his balance, but still goes down. Again inside, and that is a touchdown for Nick Chubb. And Cleveland has their first touchdown of the game. Cleveland makes this a little closer. Now a three-point game. The Giants have it. Heading to the air. Hunter scrambling around once again. He goes down at the 22. Quickly the ball goes back to Cleveland. Down three at their own 30. This is Chubb once again. Uh-oh, a lot of room here. Runs over Gordon and is brought down at the 44. Backup defenses hate this one amazing trick. 
running the ball with one of the best running backs in the game. Took him a while to find that out, but now they're going to keep leaning on him, it appears. Chubb outside, broke a tackle, but thankfully Gordon's there. Third straight carry to start the drive, and a great play is made by Frank Sermon. Yes, he has multiple really good plays today. Defense trying to get off the field. Third and eight. Nails, lobs one, and it's broken up. Incomplete, and it's going back to the Giants. Wasn't a great punt, and the Giants take over. And that is a handoff. Who is that in the backfield? It's Jabril Peppers here in the season finale. And now he's playing some receiver. The most versatile player on the team. On second down, Deion Myers makes the catch. I've been planning on this for a while. If we had like week 18, no like important stipulations. Caught, running room, man. Griffith is tripped up, that saved a touchdown. I had Peppers in there on the last drive too, but uh, I don't know, his first carry was on third and 22, so that wasn't a fun way to reveal it. Hunter, yeah, he's just kind of freestyling out here. He doesn't really know what he's doing, but he's doing a good job anyway, mostly. But we got Jabril Peppers playing some running back. A throwback to, oddly enough, my Cleveland Browns franchise rebuild. I just realized that connection here. The main thing for me was just having him play running back. There goes Hunter taking off and gaining seven. But for those of you that did not watch that series, I had Jabril Peppers. He wasn't developing great, and I decided that, you know, maybe we should play him at running back because he has a lot of really good skills. First down, Myers. Like, he did so much at Michigan. There was talk, you know, he'd come into the NFL, be the most versatile player, or one of the most versatile players. He could return kicks. The skill set sets up for him to play running back, and it's still honestly there. We checked it out earlier in the season, and he's like a mid-70s rated running back. So here in Week 18, why not give him a chance? Second and seven, Hunter will leave the pocket again. He hates the pocket so much. Peppers threw a nice block. First down, maybe. But now, in the process here, I found something really interesting I want to show you. As Peppers will not get the handoff. Come on. No, that's not what I wanted. Made me think it was going to be Peppers on third and one. Instead, a bad option keeper. So yes, I have Jabril Peppers playing running back because I moved him to running back. But wait a minute, he's played defense today. What have you done? Well, he was already listed as the slot cornerback, and when I changed his position, he's still there. Now, I don't know what happens if I remove him entirely. Maybe his name would still be there, but I don't want to screw it up. But... I just figured out how to basically have him be a two-way player in Madden. At safety, I did edit the depth chart, and he's not listed there. But he was a starter in the slot. So, I wonder how many combinations and what positions it'll allow you to do this with. Maybe it's different because this is a specialist position. But... I have him playing slot and running back right now. And that information might come in handy one day. But we have a tight game. We're here in the fourth quarter. We want to see how this one finishes. Seven yards to Chubb. As Peppers is probably gassed from playing running back, but he's still out there sometimes. This is actually a really good game to go with the two-way approach there because Cleveland goes with... Uh, their 12 personnel a lot so the slot isn't out there full time seven minutes left to go chubb off tackle trying to get downhill stiff arm again close to a first down chubb finds the opening they've been there almost every time he's touched the ball and henry is shaken up on the play 
Handoff, Nick Chubb. First down, and he accelerates the top speed. How do you take him out of the zone? Someone make a play or throw the ball. That's better. But they threw it to Chubb. No, don't do that. Chubb to the left, and that's close again to a first down. He's at 120. Third and inches. Does anybody have any confidence that we make the stop here? Chubb the lone back. Off tackle, first down and more. Spinning inside the 20. Less than four minutes to go, and this is Chubb breaking initial contact and getting the first down yet again. We don't have an answer. Peppers is out there over the slot now on first down. And Chubb runs over a defender, getting to the two. Cleveland two yards out, and Chubb dives in for the touchdown. And Cleveland has a chance to finally take the lead. For the left, too much time for Tyler. Can Hunter lead us down the field? He's got great playmakers to throw to. And he goes empty on first down. Hunter on the outside, complete to Jason Weaver. And that is a gain of 13. Empty on the first two plays. That's showing some real confidence here. On first down, it's Hunter firing. First down! And it's Pat Stallworth. He's really come through for us today. Four for 59. And we're staying empty. This is the air raid out of nowhere. So many surprises here in week 18. Hunter fires complete to Griffith at the 29. We're in field goal range, so you can't afford to run the ball with our running back. Slash slot corner, slash safety, and it's caught by Jabril Peppers. Gain of two. Also slash slot receiver on a couple plays on this drive. Two minutes left to go. Peppers straight ahead against his former team. Down to the 21. Third and two, and we're going empty. How about this call? Hunter, scanning, now extending. He's going to run. First down, Giants. A minute 26 left to go. We stay empty on first down. Hunter completes the Johnson inside the 10. And a timeout is called. Cleveland wants the ball back. But they got to get the stop first or let us score. Hunter to his left, chased. He gets it away, out of bounds. Third and one, New York. Three receivers, peppers the carry. First down inside the five. Now we go to the eye and Bobby Webster checks back in on first and goal. Toss to Webster, downhill, into the end zone. Touchdown, Giants. I like Bobby Webster down here making plays. Second touchdown of the ball game. Now to go up seven. Hunter for Peppers. It's a two-point conversion. Oh, my screen just went blank on my PC. I hope that didn't uh, screw up those couple seconds, but probably did. Jabril Peppers for the two, and this is a seven-point game. All right, defense, take us home. One minute left to go. Great drive there by the Giants. That was so much fun to watch. Got everybody stepping up to make plays. You got Jabril Peppers playing both sides of the football today. Yeah, he's out there right now on defense. Top of your screen on first down. Pass caught. Good tackle by Springs. They can only stop the clock once more. 50 seconds to play. John Nails on second down, dumps it to Chubb. He'll spin his way forward, and more time will come off the clock. We're down to 30 seconds. You got to look to get out of bounds here, or make a big play. Nails down the field. It is broken up in the end zone. Big time play. 23 seconds left. Four on the rush. Nails. Waiting, 
Firing late to Chubb, and they got to spend the time out there. And they do with 15 seconds to go. But now we're going to see some throws toward the end zone. Trying to get pressure with three. Not getting home. Nails has time to fire to the end zone. And it's knocked away. I think a receiver had that for a moment. And this is the last play right here. Fourth down. One more heave to the end zone for Nails. And he lobs it short, and it's caught. But at the 19, the game is over, and the Giants have won. We win the Jabril Peppers Bowl here in the season finale, 24-17. I hope you had fun with that. I've been planning on having Jabril go back to running back for one day for a long time. But in the process, you know, I was just trying to have fun. I actually learned something pretty interesting with that two-way. Like, I don't know if it'll work for other positions, but I'm sure going to try. So, to wrap up his day, Peppers, four carries, 16 yards. He also had a catch for two yards, plus caught a two-point try. And didn't make big plays defensively, but didn't give up anything in coverage and had two tackles. What do you think? Of course I did. It was the Jabril Peppers episode. The two-time Super Bowl MVP in this series. So let me just do an experiment here in the name of science. And let's just move, you know, Rayshon Graham to safety. And just see if he maintains that number one spot at receiver. I don't think he will. I think that what I figured out is only going to apply to other, uh, the specialist positions. So, I mean, I don't know what kind of weird things you'd want to do, but linebacker slash tight end is a possibility. Sub linebacker playing tight end. If we check out the receiver depth chart, he's removed. All right, I just moved Otis Springs to tight end. So obviously I could play him at tight end. And if we check out the sub linebacker, oh, it pulled him out of there. But now if I check slot corner, Jabril Peppers isn't showing up here. Now I didn't mess with anything at the main menu. I did all my substitutions in game. So maybe I'd have to go in and out of games to figure it out. And obviously now I can't do that. But that is pretty interesting. I need to follow up on that and see what the limitations really are. We do have an injury coming out of this game. It is to Calvin Ridley. So he will not be available to start the postseason, it looks like. Dion Myers then will be the third receiver. And let's get into the playoffs then and see that first opponent of ours. But the NFC East, we checked not that long ago, and it looks like four teams could make it in. It ends up being three. So Eagles and Cowboys make it as the six and seven seeds. We are the one. Kansas City is the one in the AFC. We've played Jacksonville. We know they're really good. The Steelers are a challenging team as well. They finish as the two seed. We'll go through awards first, and it ends up being Patrick Mahomes, the league MVP. Coach of the year is Russ Watson this time around. And then Christian McCaffrey is offensive player of the year in the NFC. Daniil Hunter for the defensive player of the year. Brian Graves had a really big season. We'll check out if he's still finished as a, a league leading passer. Quinnen Skinner, defensive rookie of the year for the Detroit Lions. And the positional awards. Galladay's best receiver. Shane Ross takes that best O-line in the final week from Christian Tolbert. And in the AFC, massive season for Najee Harris, who is close to 10,000 legacy score now. We got Miles Garrett, Aaron Winters, Oscar Short. And the positional awards, Mitch Tolliver. They just find great receivers every year. Caleb Farley, that's cool. 
So the final team stats, Petrovsky, 34 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. I thought he would set a career high in picks, and he didn't because he only threw one over the last four games. Very nice. On the ground, Tavares Towns, 1367. Respectable year for him, 13 touchdowns. Really good season. Rayshon Graham. Very nice to see him become that true number one receiver. Jawan Johnson is still great. Jason Weaver is showing that he's much more than a deep threat, doing way more stuff underneath. I think he's developed into more of like a Brandon Cooks caliber player, and Cooks is more than a deep threat. Deion Myers. Okay, rookie season. We just didn't get to see any of it. It was all in sim. One of the weirdest things we've had happen in this series. Hal Reed had his struggles. Tolbert did at the same time, but Reed more so. Ojolari, 12 sacks, 10 for Golson. The sack count, a little bit lower than you might expect, given all the talent here. And then four picks for McKinney, three for Samuel and Cunningham. So let's check out the league leaders now. Patrick Mahomes finishes with the most yards in the NFL and the most touchdowns with 43. So Brian Graves had a really good season. Looks like things quieted down a little bit here down the stretch. But he had a seven touchdown game, a five, a bunch of threes. Season just didn't finish how he wanted and they missed the playoffs because of losing four of their last five like this, including 38 to three to the Cowboys. Yeah, that's a rough way to end the season. Harris joins the 2000 yard club going for 2020 yards. Chubb 1922, then Barkley. A lot of great standouts here on the ground. A lot of 1000 yard rushers. 26 touchdowns for Saquon Barkley. And receiving Jalen Waddle. Not going to be a triple crown situation, but he did win top uh, receptions and top yards. Touchdowns goes to Kenny Galladay. And defensively, 20 sacks for Jeffrey Simmons. He's really good. Eight picks for Darius Leonard. Eight picks for Jair Alexander and 18 sacks for Brian Burns. Great season for the New York Giants. We finish with the number five scoring offense, the number one scoring defense. And now await our first playoff foe. And it will be the Philadelphia Eagles who beat the two seed Cardinals in the wild card round. The Eagles have been a tough team. I've talked about how I really do uh, respect this team. I think that, you know, the Panthers have never competed well against us, but this is not like a gimme opening game for us. In the AFC, by the way, Jacksonville and Pittsburgh are both out. So Kansas City remains the main team there I'm afraid of. But we will take on the Philadelphia Eagles in our division round playoff game. We played them this year twice, and we watched uh, the second half of those games. So we won 21-17 and 37-35. These have been really close games, really fun games. I think Jalen Hurts gives them a legitimate chance to win. He does try to get aggressive plays downfield. He will scramble, but he also isn't as accurate as some other quarterbacks and sometimes makes more mistakes threw a bad interception in that first game against us that helped us seal it. But yeah, the Eagles are a good team. Should be a fun game as we try to get back to winning in the postseason. And that's going to be coming your way next episode, everybody. Hope you had fun with the video today. Please leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and the playoffs will return very soon. Have a great day and I'll see you then.